Hello everybody, it is me, Miss Madeline, here for another week of Sunday School. I missed you all this week, and I have a very special lesson like I do every week for you. I just wanted to show you my puppy and how much she's grown. She's tired, but there she is. I'm excited for this lesson today, so there'll be a little bit of a song here, and then we will get into our lesson. Here is the song, and I'll see you after. lesson here with my dog just like our lesson and we're learning about listening to God um, Pippi here is just a little, little puppy here and I teach her to listen to me so we're gonna see how she does here <laughs> sometimes we can be a little bit stubborn too <laughs> all right let's see and just how I give her reward God gives you rewards when you listen to him so let's do roll over roll over <laughs> good girl yes all right Come here, come here, sit, sit, good girl, yes. Lie down, lie down, good, yes. Touch, touch, good girl. And shake, good girl. You see just how we have to teach a little puppy how to do things and how to listen to us. God is always trying to teach us how to listen to him and he rewards us when we do that. You have a great day. Right, I'm gonna get my book and put my puppy back into her crate and then we will get right into our lesson. Just one second. I am very excited to teach you all again for this week of Sunday school. Um, I hope you all had a fantastic week. Our memory verse for today, you want to remember this, you want to memorize it, you want to get back to me when you Memorize it, send me a video of you saying it. Our memory verse is Luke 11, verse 28. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep All it. All right, turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 22, verses 9 to 13. We have such a very, very interesting lesson today because it's not something that typically happens anymore. Actually, it never happens anymore, and it's very, very interesting. I think you guys will think it's kind of funny as well. Um, our theme is listening to God. That is what we're learning about today. And it says in Numbers 22, 9 to 13, and God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. Have you ever tried so, so hard to tell someone something, but they would not listen to you? So you're like, 
hey, can you, and they're just like, what, what, what? And then you talk louder. Hey, can you maybe do this? What? <laughs> like, and so you start going like, hey guys, I need your attention. And they still don't listen to you. And it's so, so frustrating because you need them to listen to you, but they're not. Or maybe the other way around, they hear you, but they just don't obey you. And then sometimes people ask God to do something for them. They're like, God, I really want a new bike. And that bike is my favorite thing. And I just really need it. And then they get upset and disappointed when God doesn't give them a bike. Cause maybe God doesn't want them to have a bike. Maybe God is like, you have a bike that works fine. You don't need a new bike. But they're like, I need that new bike. God, just give it to me. They're not asking cause they're not asking God. They're telling God that they want a new bike. So it says in the Bible in James four, verse three, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Lusts are like your desires, things you want. So you ask for things, you don't get them because you're not asking in the will of God. And that because you just want things to use for yourself because you want them. If they don't receive what they want from God, people become angry and thinking God doesn't love them. And they may say, God doesn't really care about me. God didn't give me the bike I wanted. Um, the man in our true story today wanted to do some wanted God to do something for him and he wanted it so 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 badly and God said no and then he asked again and God said no and this man Balaam just wanted to make himself happy he didn't realize that what God had said would not only affect him but it would affect the whole world forever when Balaam went to listen to God God used an animal to get his attention. God did a miracle through this animal to make sure that Balaam listened to him. Back in the book of Genesis, we've learned, I think we've mentioned to this people group every single lesson since we've started Sunday school. And that is the people, um, the nation of Israel that God chose to show his love to the world as unfailing promises, as unfailing truths. He's, he made this group of Israel to be set apart to show these things to the world. The Israelites were the people from whom would come the Jesus Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And the Israelites ended up in a very foreign country called Egypt, like we talked last week, and they were there for 400 years. At the end of the time, God used a godly man named Moses to lead the millions of Israelites out of Egypt and to the land he had long promised before to the, before, to the nation of Israel. As Israelites came to the promised land, they had wars with the people around them. Wicked people lived there, and the people worshipped false gods, and they did not love God. So they were always at war with these people. One of these groups of people were called the Moabites, and they had a king named Balak. Balak is a very important character in our lesson today, so remember King Balak. King Balak has a great, knew the great army of Israel was coming closer and closer to his city. And the Moabite messenger warned the king, like, they're coming. They're getting really close. We, what do we do? And because the king knew, the king knew that Israelite was blessed and whoever they fought against, they lost. And he knew that he was going to lose if Israelite was so blessed and God always fought for them. So he was panicking. He's like, what do we do? Oh, they're going to come. They're going to take my city. They're going to defeat my people. So he said, we need to act fast. We know that God fights for the Israelites. The Israelites have great possessions if they settle in Moab. They will take over our land. They will use up all the water. They will take the pastures for our animals and the fields, and we will have nothing left. So they are very scared about this. These men are right, said King Balak. We must drive the Israelites out of the land. We are not strong enough. And there are so many of them that, and God blesses them. So this is tough. We need to find a prophet a prophet who will put a curse on Israel so we can win. That was his, his whole plan to keep himself safe. So King Balak heard of a prophet. Call Balaam the prophet, said King Balak. Tell him there was people who have come from Egypt and there was a great, great number of them. And... They, they are close to us and tell them that I know that whoever that Balaam puts a blessing on, like God blesses. And when he puts curses on people, they are cursed. 
I want to curse these Israelites so we can defeat them and take them out of our land. Take this money to Balaam and said, I will pay him to put an, a, a curse on Israel. Like I will give him so much money if he does it. They went to Balaam and said, if you take this money and curse Israel, we will give you all the money that we have. Like all these bags of money that are over, that are over our shoulders right now. And Balaam, Balaam sat there and he thought, I would really like that money. Like that money would do a lot of stuff for me. So this is what he did. He said, all right, I need to ask God what he wants me to do. And I'm going to go to sleep. And in the morning, I'll tell you what God says. When the messengers went to bed, God spoke to Balaam. Who are these men? God asks. These are the important men from Balak, the king of Moab, Balaam answered. They come to ask me the curse to Israelite people so they can drive them out of the land. And God answered, Balaam, do not go with those men. Like, you cannot curse the Israelite people because I have blessed them. So, in the morning, Balaam told the messengers, go back home. The Lord told me, like, I can't go with you. And the messengers returned to King Balak. And he said, Balaam refused to come with us. Oh no, thought the king. The people must be cursed. They have to be cursed. We're going to lose our land. I will send more honorable and important messengers to Balaam. And he won't refuse if, to come if I send them. So the messengers went to Balaam with the Balak's message. Don't let anything keep you from coming to curse these people. If you will put a curse on them, I will give you anything you want. Anything. Just come and curse these people, they said. If Balak would give me all the silver and gold he has, because he remembered what God said, I can't go against the, the word of the Lord, and I can only do what he says. If Balaam had just left the whole thing there, his life would have been fine. It would have been good for him if he had just accepted God's answer was good, and for everyone else too, and cared about more about pleasing God than pleasing the king Balak. And, but Balaam was not content with God's answer. He went to bed that night thinking about all the money that he could have had if he would have just said, sure, I'll curse Israel. Balaam began to think. And he said, I would surely like the honor and the riches that the king would give me if I cursed the Israelites. So even though God had already told Balaam that what his will was, Balaam said to the messengers, why don't you spend the night? And I will ask God, and maybe he'll change his mind. So... So God came to Balaam again, and ba God said to Balaam, Okay, go ahead, God said. If the men come to you, go get up and go with them. But only say the words that I tell you to say. Balaam got up in the morning, perhaps thinking, I surely would like that money. Maybe I can curse the Israelites. So even though he knew that God had blessed the Israelites, Balaam got on his donkey and went with the men. But God wasn't pleased with Balaam. God knew that Balaam, deep in his heart, wanted money and wanted honor. The Bible says in 2, Timothy, 2 Peter 2, verse 15, Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Balaam went on his way, planning to curse Israel, no matter what God said. But God sent his angel who was holding a sword to stand in Balaam's path. And Balaam's donkey was like, what is this? And he turned the other way. So the donkey was off the path. What in the world are you doing? Balaam shouted at his donkey as he hit her. He hit his donkey to get, to get her back on the path. But Balaam couldn't see the angel. Only the donkey could. Further down the path, the donkey came to a place with walls on both sides. As the donkey moved aside to get out of the angel's way, Balaam's foot was crushed between the donkey and the wall. Balaam hit his poor donkey again, and he couldn't see the angel still. The angel of the Lord moved, moved further down the path into a narrow place with no way to turn right or left. When the donkey saw there was no way out, he, she just fell down right where she was. Balaam became so, so angry. He took a stick and he beat the donkey. What have I done to you? The donkey said to Balaam. Why have you beaten me these three times? And can you imagine? The donkey talked to Balaam. And I bet like he was like, what in the world? Right? Now, we've read a lot of books in our lives. And we've seen maybe some shows or maybe a... 
TV program that have said that's had little birds chirping and talking to each other or something like that. But never in real life have we ever seen an animal talk. But God miraculously gave this donkey the ability to talk to Balaam. Balaam was so angry, he didn't even realize that donkeys don't usually talk. <laughs> so, if I had a, a sword, Balaam shouted angrily, I would kill you. I like the donkey's probably like, what? Haven't I been your faithful donkey? She said. Have I done anything like this before? She said. Well, no, said Balaam. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and Balaam saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with the sword drawn. And Balaam realized that God had sent his angel to stop him. And he fell on his face before the Lord. Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? The angel said. I came here to keep you from going against the Lord. If your donkey hadn't turned away, I would have killed you and saved her life. I have sinned, Balaam said. I didn't know you were standing against me. If you want to, I will go back home now, Balaam said to the angel. Go with the men, the angel answered. But only say what the Lord tells you to say. So Balaam met with the king why didn't you come sooner, the king said to Balaam. Don't you understand that I am able to give you great honor and money if you would have just come? Well, I'm here now, Balaam said, but I can only say the words that God told me to say. Balak brought Balaam to one of the high hills where Balak worshipped idols. From that high place, they could see millions of Israelite people on this high place. Balaam spoke the words of God to Balak. Balak you brought me here to curse Israelite, but how can I curse these people that God has not cursed? God has special plans for the Israelites, and I cannot put a curse on them. And then Balaam blessed the Israelites. What? Balak cried in anger. What have you done to me? I called you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them. Well, let's go to another place, Balak said. Maybe God can change his mind, and maybe you'll be able to curse Israelite from a different place. That Balaam couldn't curse people from the other place either. I can only tell you what God tells me to say, he said. And God told me that he has already let and taken care of the Israelites and I cannot curse them. Not only that, uh, God is also going to destroy the enemies of the Israelites. Balak felt desperate. I thought you would curse the Israelites, not bless them. Let's go to another mountain. So they went to another mountain and God, and then Bal and even in the third place, God did not change his mind. And Balaam said, I cannot curse the Israelites. He got so angry. He started clapping his hands together. He's like, I told you to curse my enemies. Like he was so, so upset. But you have blessed them three times. How, now go back home. I thought you would, I thought you would give great honor. I would give you great honor and riches, but God has kept you from that honor, he said. And then Balaam told him, like, I told your messengers that if you would give me all your silver and all your gold, that I cannot say the Lord does not tell me to say. And Balaam told Balak the good plans God had for Israel. And then Balaam returned home. Balaam still wanted to be friends with the king Balak and thought, and he still wanted the honor and the money that Balak could have given him. So when he saw God would not let him put a curse on Israel, Balaam told Balak how he could weaken the Israelites so they wouldn't take over his land. Let's just get to know them and invite them over to feast in to your idols. Let them feel like they fit in with you. Then you won't be afraid of them. They won't be afraid of you at all. And you won't be afraid of them. And they'll be just like your people. And they won't be blessed by God anymore. The Bible says in Revelations 2 verse 14, Thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to make and commit fornication. And sadly, in the end of all this, Balaam lost his life as well. It says in Joshua 13 verse 22, Balaam, also the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with a sword among them that were slain by them. Has your mom or dad ever tried to tell you something? that you didn't want to hear and they said no and you just could not take it for an answer. It didn't matter what they said, you're just like, no, like please, and you begged them and you begged them and you begged them, just please let me go to my friend's house, please let me do this. And they said, no, you can't, we're not letting you do that. 
maybe you try to trick them into giving you a different answer and you went to your room crying hoping they would change their mind. Maybe you answered your mom disrespectfully, disrespectfully or you took it out on someone else like your little brother or little sister and you hit them because you were mad because mom isn't letting me do this. Not everything that we wish for is good for us and not everything that we wish for is good for others. And sometimes we do things and we want things to happen that are damaging, not only just not good, but damaging to the people around us, damaging to your siblings and da damaging to your family. And because you want it so, so bad and God says no, you get angry, but you don't know what God is sparing you from because he knows more than you do. Sometimes we want something so badly that like Balaam, we don't think how it might be damaging later on. Our desire to have our own way blinds us from the truth just to Balaam, just as Balaam couldn't see the angel on his path because he was blinded by what he wanted, his riches and his honor. We can't see what God wants us to do in our lives. And we keep pushing ahead, trying to make things work the way we want them to. What should have Balaam done? What do you think Balaam should have done? You know what he probably should have done? He probably should have just left it after the first time when they said, and they came to his house and they offered him the money. Just say no, it would have been over way sooner. But he didn't. What should you do when your authority gives you a decision you don't like? You should listen to your authority. You should do what God's word says, even though it's something that is hard for you to obey. You should trust that God knows best. You should read God's word and he knows what will work out in the best in the end and you should read his word and trust it. God knows the best answer for every part of your life if you will find it and if you will listen to God. You will never go wrong if you read God's word and you accept the answer in his word as truth and realize that even if you are disappointed that God loves you and he knows the very best thing for you. All right, everybody, that is our lesson for today. Let's bow in a word of prayer. I hope you all have a great week. I look forward to seeing you all next week and you have a fantastic day. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and this lesson that I was able to present to my students, Lord. And I know it's hard because we're all so far apart and we can't have classes. I pray about you bless them despite all of this that's going on in the world, Lord, whether they are far away or close. I pray that whoever is listening to this message will understand your word and understand the lesson and that they will realize that you give answers and we should trust you with our lives despite what we think is best for our lives because you know what is best. I pray if there's any child out there that does not know you as Jesus, as Savior, that you will work in their hearts and they will trust you to be their savior one day soon, Lord. I pray you'll bless their week. I'll pray you keep them safe and keep them healthy. And in Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, you have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.